we are in Pulzeng, the cradle of Czech beer. Na zdraví. Before we visit the famous Pulsner beer brewery and try their beer, let's talk about the crest of the city of Pulsen. Because if you take a look at it, you will find an animal that does not really belong to this geographical zone. A dog. Okay, I'm joking. It's a camel, of course. Why is there a camel on the crest of the city of Pulsen? Let's find out and let's talk history. You can find the remains of old defense structure of Pulzeng in this park. So this is where the boundary of the city used to be located. Pulzeng was founded at the confluence of rivers Radbuza and Mje. This was not a magical spell, just the name of the rivers. And it was an important point on the trade route from Prague to Bavaria. Pulzeng grew quite quickly and became the third largest city in Middle Ages after Prague and Kutna Hora. But let's look at some other medieval structures here. Today, the biggest evidence of Pulzeng's rich medieval history is this cathedral of Saint Bartholomew. <sighs> What's wrong, Valerie? I'm not sure I can do it. What, like climb the tower? Yeah, it's the tallest church tower in the Czech Republic, 102 meters tall. But the viewpoint is only 56 meters. Plus, I'm sure our subscribers will appreciate the effort and will give you a like if you do it. Okay, let's try it. Oh my god, I made it guys, 299 steps, but Vatsov had it harder because he has to carry all the equipment. Nice view! So, what about the camel, Valerie? Oh, right. So in 1434, the Hussites were sieging Pulzeng, and they were already under the city walls of Pulzeng for six months when the citizens of the city decided to attempt a counter attack. And amidst the chaos of the battle, they discovered that the Hussites brought a very strange, handsome animal with them a camel probably a Bactrian camel. So Pulzeng people took the camel with them and later included it into their city crest as a symbol of their courage and resilience. But where did the Hussites get the camel? Oh, they apparently got it from the Polish king, who got it from Crimean Tatars, who got it from Mongolia. Oh, Mongolia, that's not a spinning distance from Pulzeng. Oh yeah, but let's go to our next stop. This beautiful Renaissance building is the Town Hall. You can find the portrait of Rudolf II among its beautiful graffito pictures. Because he lived here during the plague epidemic in Prague. So we could say Pulzeng was the seat of the Holy Roman Emperor, just like Prague or Vienna was, but for a shorter time. All right, let's explore the rest of the city center. I have to say that uh, the Christmas market in Pulzeng is much better than the Christmas market in Prague. Because look at all of that. There is Zizek. No, he's not there. He's missing, no? Maybe somebody stole him. No, Jesus. Yeah. 
In 19th century, the look of Pulzing changed drastically. The old city walls were demolished and substituted with parks. The Great Synagogue, the largest synagogue in the Czech Republic, was established, as well as theaters, museums, and factories. One of them was Škoda factory, which I'm sure some of you have heard of because of their cars. But originally, Škoda was producing weapons and ammunition, first under the Austro-Hungarian rule, but during the Second World War, it became one of the largest weapon manufacturers serving Nazi Germany. It is still considered to be a controversial topic. Škoda factory was immensely important for Nazis, and they even created a decoy model of Škoda factory to serve as a fake target for the Allied air forces. They called it Wood Lover. In February 1945, during the Yalta Conference, US President Franklin D. Roosevelt, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin had decided on where the demarcation line would be drawn, and it split Czech lands into two parts, so Pulzing was liberated by American army. That is why you can find the monument Thank You America in the historical city center, as well as the museum and the monument to General Patton. And it's time to visit the Pilsner Brewery. It is super easy to get there from the train station. Just walk five minutes across the bridge and you're there. Once you're inside, we recommend taking a tour of the brewery. It lasts around 80 minutes and you'll learn about Pilsner beer, see into their production, and even try their one-of-a-kind unfiltered, unpasteurized Pilsner that is still fermented in the barrels, the old-fashioned way. The visit to Pilsner Brewery was the highlight of our trip. The historical center was lovely, of course, but somehow it felt like this brewery is the heart of the city. Pilsing is really famous for its beer, so even if you are not a frequent beer drinker, I still think you should try it here, because being here and not trying their beer is like traveling to Italy and refusing to eat pizza or pasta. Thank you for watching, guys. We hope you liked our today's video. Let us know if you are planning to visit this very beautiful city, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye!